this is a kit I've been looking forward to for some time actually. It's another clock kit and I know I've done loads of these but this one is a bit more sophisticated than most. It's got a lot of LEDs, it's got a lot of um, uh, seven segment LED displays, it's got a large plastic case as you can see here. Let's get all the bits and pieces out. We've got um, a voltage regulator in this bag, we've got a strip here for push button switches, bunch of transistors, there's, there's quite a bit of stuff, we've got the brains of it, there's a chip there in um, potting compound on, on a PCB, um, even supplied a battery, that green disc there is uh, a speaker and so on, a whole bunch of resistors, all fairly straightforward stuff, LEDs, We've got uh, hardware which will, if we look at the back of the, um, the the case that it comes with, that will be a flip out stand eventually. Buttons at the top um, showing all the uh, functions, power and so on and so forth. Um, it even comes with a nice acrylic plastic, clear plastic surround. Uh, which gives it a bit of a frame-like effect, which is rather nice. I'm guessing that goes on there like that. Uh, and we have this cover plate, which marks the function of all the different LEDs and displays um, that, it, uh, that it has. So temperature, AM, PM, year, month, day, or month day. Um, unfortunately, as you can probably see, or maybe able to see there, that during transit, there you go, it's been cracked rather badly and that is really, really disappointing. Um, this was actually quite an expensive kit, it was about £18, which for a Banggood kit is a lot of money, so to have that sort of damage um, is... Uh, yeah, a bit upsetting, but, you know, the, the aggravation of going through the process of getting a replacement, I, you know, I can't be bothered. I'd go on and make the kit. Um, we have another little bag of uh, tricks here, which is basically hardware. Sticky pads there, which I think will install the speaker or hold the speaker in position. Um, if you go on the web page for this particular uh, clock, you will find very, very comprehensive um, instructions on how to put this kit together. Very comprehensive, um, very nicely done. Um, full colour photographs and all the rest of it, which is, is fairly rare. These are the uh, smaller uh, seven segment display LEDs. These are going to be the primary ones. Um, as I say, there was a bag of LEDs there for indicators like, I guess, the Day of the week, the temperature, whether it's AM, F, uh, PM, um, whether the alarm's on, uh, whether the, uh, I don't know what that would be, uh, I don't know, alarm setting or something like that, we'll, we'll work it all out. I'm going to try and tidy that up a little bit, but I don't think there's much I can do with it really, it's a bit of a shame, never mind. Now let's have a look at the main board, that's um, the business end of this, so let's bring the um, camera a little bit closer to detail. Okay, so the, the PCB is quite large actually, there's, there's certainly plenty to it. Um, and you can see here, the seven segment displays are illustrated on the PCB. So here you've got year one, year two, year three, four, year four, so that'd be like you know, two, 2018 for 2018. Um, month one, month two, so it'll be zero one for January or one one for November. Um, here we've got day one, day two, zero one for the first of the month, two zero for the twentieth of the month. Uh, all very straightforward. I'm not sure what these two switch one, switch two, S one, S two. Uh, not sure what they'll be doing. Um, S one, S two. What would that be? Yeah, I don't know. We'll work it out. Um, so plenty of LEDs, so yeah, LED clock, oh right, so the alarm clock, uh, now time, so that'll be normal time. 
so that will be the indicators for these two here so that's alarm time and current time uh, usefully if you look at all the resistors for which there are many you'll see that the resistor values are actually marked on the PCB which is which is nice that makes life a lot more interesting a lot easier rather um, so that will probably be the first thing I do is install all the uh, all the uh, resistors now the resistors come unmarked you are going to have to uh, work out what the value of the resistors are either use a multimeter or the instructions that you'll get on the Banggood web page have got all of the resistors color coded it will tell you what they are but I do recommend that if you've got a multimeter to test the value before you install each of them um, that's that's worth doing to say the least um, so the board is fairly straightforward you know electrolytic caps there um, that's where the battery backup will go um, we've got a whole bunch of diodes to uh, to fit in there um, a whole bunch of LEDs uh, yeah I, you know it, the LED uh, there's the AM PM LED it's um it's fairly straightforward in, in what it is but uh, yeah I'm looking forward to uh, piecing this one together now this is going to be an interesting uh, install probably worth going to be uh, the first thing that you do install as well because once you've got all the other components in is this is going to be the trickiest component of the lot to install so um, I'm thinking that uh, you probably want to go with that one first and that one, if I can get at it, is the uh, the main chip. And that will go on there like that. And I will um, probably show you this being soldered up. Because I, for those of you who have looked at the FM radio kit, which was the last video I did before this one, there was a, a component very much like this. And I did, I, I did struggle... Um, installing it because it's, it's a fairly messy uh, component to actually solder down because you, you've got to sort of bridge the thickness of the board although this one is very very thin that's a very thin piece of board very thin so that probably won't be so bad but that will need um, a lot of flux well not a lot but it will need flux on it which will allow the solder to flow evenly um, from the pins to the pads um, so uh, that is probably the first thing to install before you start mucking about with the um, uh, mucking about with the uh, capacitors and resistors and so on the other thing is is that on the back here you've got these pads and you'll see here that I think what this means is that you, you see these two pads here if you don't if well if you bridge those pads with solder on this one it'll display Fahrenheit for temperature and on this one it'll show it as a 12 hour clock if you leave them broken as the indication shows then it will be 24 hours and centigrade which is useful for me because I will want a 24 hour clock and I prefer to deal in centigrade, not Fahrenheit. But I know uh, in America, for example, uh, the uh, the use of Fahrenheit is much more popular. So you can just bridge that, and it will show Fahrenheit. Um, and pretty much that's it. We've got a crystal there to install. Um, so that's probably going to be a reference crystal for the chip. Um, everything else is actually pretty straightforward you'll see on the board that there's a dot for the uh, seven segment display LED so you even know the correct orientation for those so that one will go like that there's the dot there there's the dot there and it's the same for the uh, uh, same for the smaller ones as well with their dots so that's all going to be very interesting uh, are very straightforward. Um, the capacitors again, 102 path. It's all path. It's all marked there. 
Um, yeah, so I, I don't think this is going to be too difficult. I think, frankly, the most difficult thing is going to be installing uh, this chip and also making sure you get the right value resistors in place. So that's a start off. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to break this video up into different parts or whether I'll do it all in one go, but I think, unlike I did with the radio, which kind of banged on a bit, um, well, it banged on a lot, I think what I shall do is I shall install uh, most of the components because they're just through hole soldering um, and um, uh, such as the resistors, capacitors, and the LEDs, it's all very, very straightforward. Um, and uh, then we'll get to the more unique stuff about the kit. I'll certainly show you how the soldering of this goes and um, uh, the uh, installation of the case and the hardware and the, and the bits and pieces that make this particular kit what it is. So uh, with that, um, let's press on. Well, before we go any further, I thought I'd just show you the um, instructions which are linked um, from the actual item for sale on Banggood. And you can see here, you've got some very, very high quality photographs showing you all the resistors and uh, bandings and values and so on and so forth. Like I say, I suggest what you do is uh, use a multimeter just to double check the value rather than just going by these photographs. But um, the fact that they've done this is uh, quite nice. Um, you can see here, you've got a photograph of the board. It's starting um, to show you where all the bits and pieces are. I think that's the, uh, I can zoom in here for you. That's the thermistor. So that will be uh, telling you the temperature. Um, you've also got the layout for the resistors. Uh, and where they go so you can double check that you've got the right resistor value in the right spot which is not too difficult really because like we said before the actual board actually has the uh, you can't see this too well because I've, I've turned the lighting down so you can see the uh, the tablet screen but it's actually got the resistor values um, actually printed on the, the board um, so let's just scroll down it says uh, tells you, just basically gives you <coughs> a complete set of instructions as to how to install each component. You can see here you've got a diode and it's telling you or it's showing you here the um, polarity or the uh, direction in which it goes. The black band on the diode is negative and the other end is therefore positive. You just go by the uh, screen print as well. You can see that that sign there. <clears throat> and um, uh, that tells you the polarity and of course they do this on like, all the other components that are polarity sensitive there's another diode there again similar thing um, and uh, yeah it's um, it's, it's very straightforward you know, capacitors uh, ceramic caps uh, and you can see here 20p 20, pa uh, 20 picofarad um, same there it's 100, is it? Oh, I don't know the, the, the red lines in the way there. 104 peak, peak of ferret. All very, very straightforward. Um, also shows you the uh, orientation on the board of the uh, electrolytic caps. One of them is vertical, the other one's horizontal, and so on and so forth. It's, you know, it's quite nicely done. Uh, no two ways about it. Installing all the diodes and, yeah. I think this is one of the better set of instructions that I've ever seen on a Banggood kit. Um, you know, you've got the voltage regulator here, um, and uh, you know, bend the pins and shows you to bolt it down. Um, it's uh, yeah, I think it's really, really well done. Now here's the um, uh, the IC, which is uh, this guy, which I'm going to. Uh, install first because I think it will be easier to install that um, without all the other components on it. I could be wrong mind you it is going on the back you see and I just want I just want this it goes on that pad there and I want this flat on the table 
while I'm soldering the IC in. Of course, if I've got a load of components on this side making the thing wobble about, um, that's not going to be so easy. So I think that's probably one of the first things that you install. Um, so just uh, scroll through. There's a crystal push to make buttons on uh, a separate strip board that's supplied. Um, I don't know what it means by install the keyboarding into the main board. Pay special attention to solder joints. Oh yes, yeah, so this is that's the installation of the uh, the buttons. You can see like sort of like a right angle. We've got to be at ninety degrees. Um, so yeah, you, you know, follow these instructions. I think you'll uh, you'll have a very good um, uh, a very very good result. Um, yeah, that's looking fine. Um, the power supply you see here is 9, nine volt to 12 volt um, and I was rather hoping that it would be uh, 5 volts um, drawing no more than well an amp possibly preferably half a milliamp a uh, 500 milliamps but um, unfortunately it's uh, it's running at 9 volts so I've got to find a a nine volt supply and a nine volt supply with a barrel jack on it which I don't have or I might have a barrel jack that fits I don't know so that could be interesting but <clears throat> we shall see um, but all the instructions are here it's all very it's all very straightforward to be honest um, you see here uh, on this one this is the button array that sits at the top of the uh, uh, of the case and uh, the button array is here where is it let me get it out uh, another casualty of the um, shipping unfortunately you can see there's the actual button array and one of the buttons is missing here it's not actually missing I do have it it's just broken off so I'm gonna have to come up with a solution to I don't know glue that back in or something uh, but it's, I assume it's uh, he got broken in trans transit, and well, what do you do? Not a lot is the answer. It, it is what it is. Um, as I say, the uh, biggest upset um, is the cracked. Um, you, know, you can see the crack there on the the main cover, which you know there's not an awful lot I can do about that. Um, it is actually <coughs> sticking up and out and yeah it's not uh, it's not good it's a it's a real shame but you know to go back to banggood and argue the toss over it and get them to send me another one and yeah, i'd just rather build it like it is and move on uh <coughs> as i say though it was a it wasn't a cheap kit not by banggood standards any rate it was up 20 pounds but um, if this one turns out really nicely um, and functions well I might consider buying another one um, but uh, getting ahead of ourselves a bit there <coughs> that's the installation of the speaker I think uh, I don't know but it looks like it's got the facility for two speakers here uh, on this picture but I think you only get the one um, I'm pretty sure you only get the one yeah, it looks like it. So, uh, uh, there you go. Not to worry. Then that's the fitting and that's the cover that's broken, unfortunately. Never mind. Um, and that's uh, screwing in the back. And then eventually you've got the circuit diagram of the entire, uh, the entire device. Uh, which actually looking at that circuit diagram, it's not that complicated. There is a lot of soldering here, but then you've got quite a few um, pins on each of the LED uh, displays, the seven segment displays uh, and stuff like that. And it all sort of adds up to uh, a lot of soldering. But I, I don't think it's going to be a difficult one. There's, there's nothing that the most difficult thing um, is going to be soldering that in. And uh, let's let's bring some light on it. Uh, yeah, soldering that that chip in, and um, uh, that is uh, going to require some flux. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you how I do that when I actually get round to doing that, which will be well, actually the next thing I do, and uh, we will um, see how that goes. 
So, uh, right, so that's the instructions. Um, make sure that you have a good look through those. And I'm uh, fairly tempted to follow the uh, line of instruction in terms of uh, putting it together. Um, that way one assumes you can't make any mistakes. Famous last words, get ready for some mistakes. Right, it's now time to solder this chip in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of um, insulation tape um, to actually hold it in position. But the first thing I'm going to do is line it up. And uh, you probably get my big fat head in the way now. That's not going to work. Um, I just need to line up the pins on the PCB board with the pins on the main board. Um, just get it all nicely lined up. I think that's pretty good. I'm then going to really stick it down with that piece of insulation tape. I'm now going to inspect it closer up uh, with a closer view. Um, that's looking pretty good to me. The problem is, is that it's slightly um, you might be able to see it moving, you might not, I don't know, but um, it's, it's slightly tilted up away from the board. Um, so to counteract that, I think what I will do is... Uh, <clears throat> not what I would call an elegant solution, but it's one that's going to work. Just a, a little clamp there, and that brings it right down on the board so that is now nice and flat now the next thing to do is to get a bit of flux <coughs> things on the flux pen and I'm just gonna put a bit on there and there because all I want to do really is get two decent joints in place um, and then I can remove the tape and the clamp and we'll be good to go so what I'm going to do now is let's see if I can bring this into shot for you. Um, in fact, that's not into shot for me. So this is not really. Let me position this so I can see it. Because, let's be honest, if I can't see it, this is all going to go horribly wrong. So if I can bring that forward a bit like that, that's a bit better. I think you can see that. And what I'm, I'm looking for is that because I put flux on it, I'm hoping that I'll get a nice flow of solder across the pin like that. Now... I think that, that that's good enough for now. So let's bring it around the other side and do one on this side. I'm thinking you can still see that just about I think. Let's just make sure it's in focus. And you then do similar here, and I just you just sort of drag the solder across, oh, I've got a dirty great bead on the end of my iron, which is never a good thing. Let me <coughs> let me just move that out of the way, and using my eye loop. I'm just going to inspect it close up just to see. Yep, yeah, they're nice. They're nice. Yep, yeah, that's uh, that's connected quite easily. So I'm going to remove the clamp um, and the tape. We don't need that anymore. So it's now nicely welded onto the board with those two uh, 
connectors there. Let's just bring that up a little bit so everybody can see what's going on. So uh, let's put a decent amount of flux on everything. Ah, oh, that's interesting. That side's up a bit now. Hmm, okay. Right, so I think we're going to need to bring the clamp back in. Just to, that's not going to be, is that going to go close enough? Just about. Let's bring that down very gently. <coughs> so now I've got it clamped down, so we better, we better do a couple of couple of pins here, which I'll probably want it this way, like that, that's better, let's see if we can, uh, there we go, and we'll do one there as well I think, and I don't know if you can see how the flux, you see the, the solder is basically drawn across where the flux is from one pad to another and you get a nice a nice bridge. I don't know how close I can I can get this for you to so you can see what I've done. I don't think this is going to uh I'm just wondering if I zoom out where is it? It's there. Maybe can I put a bit more light on the subject? And how close can I get it? Uh, there you go. So you can see the state of um, those solder joints, no bridges, which is what you want. So I'm going to solder the rest of this up now and I'll show you what it looks like after it's finished. And there we have the chip fully installed. Um, the, uh, the flux made that so easy. The best thing to do, the easiest thing I, I find is that the the pads on the chipboard itself are quite large so a good blob of solder on there and then just drag it blob of solder and drag it and you get a nice clean bridge between the main board and the chipboard and uh, yeah that that's um that's worked pretty well if you've got an eye loop or a magnifying glass or something it's always worth just go over and check the quality of your work um, which is an interesting idea as to whether I can use this to let you see what the uh, solder joints are like so that's basically what I do is just go through and make sure there's no bridges make sure that the connection seems to be unbroken and uh, yeah I think that's uh, I think as they say we are good to go so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start installing the fairly straightforward components such as the resistors and the diodes and the capacitors, get those done because there's lots of those and there's no magical mystery um, with them. I'll, I'll show you uh, the installation of the LEDs and the uh, electrolytic capacitors because they are... Um, polarity sensitive in other words you can put them in the wrong way around whereas the resistors and the ceramic caps um, you can't obviously the diodes are also um, polarity sensitive you can see there's there's a diode there and that little band just there is where the negative side goes same with diode 6 there and uh, so on there's plenty of room for a LEDs all over the place, one for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. So, you can see there, that's the large surface area for the uh, uh, voltage regulator, which that needs to be physically bolted down, as we saw in the instructions. So I've got a nice pad with a fair bit of solder on it already, so that should be... Uh, reasonably straightforward to do but perhaps we'll show you the installation of that as well when we get there but the rest of it is pretty straightforward I think that 
there is the Themista NTC. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know if it dims or not. In which case it would need a photoelectric cell. I haven't seen one in the kit, so I'm guessing not. But it's fairly typical of these Chinese kits. They often use photoelectric cells to dim the light when it's in uh, in darkness. Um, but anyway, can't ask for everything, can you? Right, so that's that. Um, happy with the way that uh, that chip installed. That went in quite neatly. So I'll get those resistors, capacitors and such like, those straightforward components, I'll get those done and uh, show you when, I, when, when that bit's completed. Okay, so how are we doing? Well, <coughs> we've got uh, a bunch of resistors in. Um, let's see if we can sharpen that with an image up. Yeah, so we've got all the resistors in and interestingly enough, um, this is probably one of the first Banger kits where the actual number of components, in this case resistors, although I've put in three um, diodes as well, um, where I've had exactly the right number of components. Normally they'll put a, you know, if you've got say 10, 100k resistors to put in, you might get more than 10, and they might give you 10, 11, uh, 11, 12, something like that, and you always have a couple of couple left over. But this one, you've got exactly the right number of components, which um, which is unusual. Um, but yeah, so all the resistors are in. So we've got the LEDs and um, obviously the main LEDs. We've got some electrolytic caps to go in there. We have some more resistors, uh, some more diodes rather, uh, to go in. So those sort of fairly basic components, I'm going to get all of those populated. Um, and uh, until we start moving on to some of the more interesting stuff, um, which is primarily the LEDs, I guess, um, and also um, installation of that regular voltage regulator. So uh, there we go. So uh, yeah, the soldering was uh, fairly okay. Uh, it looks like we got on the back there. We have a crystal to go in there. interesting uh, and <coughs> important to install it before we put the um, that particular LED in none of these other LEDs certainly the big ones none of them have got components that would stick up underneath them so that's okay but we need to get make sure that crystal is installed or well, mind you you could install it um, on the back you've got to install it on the back anyway but um, you can certainly solder it there, that's not a problem. Uh, even if the LED was in, it's just easy when it's not. So yeah, there's three IN60 diodes there. And you can see the orientation of the diode. Um, let's see if I can... So the black band on the diode corresponds with the band on the silk, spring, silk screen print there so all fairly straightforward no problems right so let's get some more components in and well things have moved on a little bit um, what I've done is I've installed all the transistors um, there's two types of transistor there's uh, I think it's an 855 uh, uh, yeah an S8 550 and the other value is an S8 and see that S8050. So um, there's two types there. Just sort them out into two separate piles, match them up with the number on the silk screen, and you're good to go. And you can see that the um, shape of the transistor with a, a round back and a flat front needs to correspond with the similar shape on the um, silk screen, so you don't have to know which pin is the base collector and emitter. Um, so, uh, yeah, another one there. What else have we installed? We have installed the electrolytic capacitors. I had a bit of a problem with that. I put it in the wrong way round because they are polarity sensitive. And you can see, we can't see because that capacitor's in the way. And I'll fit all the, uh, those capacitors as well. But on the board, it is marked um, the correct positive and negative for the 
electrolytics. I'm just trying to find one which you can see if I lift that up a bit. You can see it's marked positive and then therefore the other side will be negative. And on the capacitors, the negative is marked with a minus sign. And the positive is identifiable by the fact that it's a longer lead on it than the negative. But it doesn't matter because you can see which one's negative. So by definition, the other one's positive. Ha ha. Easy when you know how. Um, on the back, I have fitted the, where is it? There you go, that little crystal, reference crystal, I think, for the microcontroller. Uh... And uh, I think the next thing I want to do is fit the um, the, the voltage regulator. Now that guy um, needs to have um, uh, focus. There you go. Um, that needs to be bolted down, so I need to find the nut and bolt for that. Right, so I've got the nut and bolt there and there uh, for the voltage regulator. Uh, let's just put those to one side just for a moment. The voltage regulator needs to uh, go in there. Like that. And I need to bend the pins down. I'm going to eyeball this. It's probably not the best way of doing it. But I'm going to try and line it up with the AOL. Uh, which isn't that far off that. A bit of a push. I think that's pretty much it. So now I know roughly where the bend is. I'm going to take my pliers and I probably want to go a little bit further up from that and then give it a nice 90 degree bend like that. And with a bit of luck, that will line up. What do you think? Will it line up, or am I screwed it up? Look at that, spot on. Spot on. That's what you want to do. So, I'm going to put the nut and bolt in first before I solder it, because that will make sure that it's nice and flat on the board. to be size screwdriver this one not takes Phillips and flathead so that's okay give that a bit of a tweak and that's pretty tight and all I need to do now is solder those pins Trying to do this with my head cocked round the camera. You've probably got a picture of me fat head now. There we go, I just want to make sure that I'm not bridging any connections here. There we have it. Uh, if my head was in the way, apologies. And uh, there we have it. Cut those pins short. And uh, there we go. That's the, where is it? I've lost it, there you go. That's the voltage regulator. Suitably out of focus. Is that better? Yeah. And uh, yeah reasonably neat job so uh, quite happy with that so what are we left with well we've got this board here let's uh, zoom out again we've got this board here and this one uh, is the one that will take all of the um, switches 
which go along the top of the unit to control the uh, uh, the clock settings and alarm and all the rest of it. So all of those go in there like that. There's a whole string of them along there. So I'm just going to pop those in and get that done. Right, okay, so further progress. Battery holder is in. Uh, what else did we do in that last session? Um, but so battery holder, oh yeah, we um, soldered all the switches to that strip of board there. So that's all done. Um, the next thing to do is the LEDs, the single LEDs here. Where are they? This lot up here. So I've got a bunch of these to, to put in. Um, now I can't remember what colour I ordered because all the colours from all the LEDs will be the same. They'll be blue, green or red. I've got a feeling I ordered green. Now I could wait until the kit's complete and power it up for the first time and see but I want to know now so I thought what I'd do is just um, open up the backup battery there it is CR2032 with fingerprints on which it shouldn't have that's my own stupid fault and just power up one of these LEDs and see what colour it is there we go it's green green LED I thought I ordered green so let's get all of these installed now with um, these guys you'll see that um, each LED oops each LED um, has uh, a long leg and a short leg the long leg of the LED is the positive side so if we find an LED position here you'll see that on the print silk screen the one edge of the LED on the silk screen is flat let's see if I can show you here I'll find it myself my eyesight is just just the pits there we go um, it's flat on that side there and that's the negative side so the long pin is positive and the flat side there you go, I think you can probably see it there. The flat side is a negative, so the flat side will go that way. Like that. And there's a whole bunch of them along here. Uh, a couple of them there. Uh, there's a couple there. I would imagine that those flash to denote the minutes going by there's a couple of more up there I think there's a couple yeah a couple more there so there's quite a few um, so I'm gonna get all of those soldered in right now okay right we have got all the single LEDs uh, soldered in um, nice and flat up against the board the way to do that is just to solder one LED put your thumb on the back of it and then just reheat the soldered pin and it will just fall flat to the board let it go and then solder the other pin and having said that, that one looks a bit wonky is it? or is that me? no, that one is wonky let's fix that um, it's not wonky anymore what's the other one like? Oh, that's ok so uh, yeah, that's all the LEDs fixed in. Now the other thing is the uh, power jack, which is here, um, is a bit odd in the way that it's installed. You can see these two slits here, and the way it installs is that the two prongs, you've actually got three there, it only uses those two. Um, let's, uh, all focused and those two go in there like that but you what you need to do is have the um, have the 
jack about 50% to the board. So it needs to be roughly like that. No, I'm not going to do that on camera too easily, so uh, I shall, because uh, it's going to flip and fl slide about while I'm trying to solder it. Um, so I'm going to try and fit that in now, I think, before I move on to the main LED 7 to 7 digit display, 7 segment display um, LEDs. So uh, what I shall do is solder that in and then move on to the seven segment displays and they'll just they just simply plug into these various locations here and here there's only the two sizes four large and the rest of the small ones you just need to be mindful of the orientation so they meet up with the dots so uh, for example, you've got a dot on that small one there, so it will go in there like that. Okay, so this will represent a fair old bit of soldering. Um, so I'm going to get all of that done, and once that's complete, I shall come back and we will talk about what's going to happen next. Um, in the meantime, as well, I think I need to sort out a 9 volt or 12 volt supply. Um, for this particular kit, which might be easier said than done. Although I've got some old mobile phone chargers, which I think would be more than adequate for this. Um, and they're normally 9 or 12 volts, something like that. So I'll go and do some rummaging around and see what I can find. Um, because it would be a shame to build this kit and not be able to power it up. That would be silly. So... On the basis and we're not going to do silly um, I shall sort that one out by the way we talking about sort of excess components with kits those are all the spare LEDs you can never have enough LEDs in your life let me do that and I'll be back right well that was a lot of soldering the all the displays are now in uh, the small displays have got this um, plastic film on them, which is just a protection, so you can peel that off uh, uh, when they're installed. Um, really difficult to get off. Uh, the large ones didn't have any on there for some reason. Um, so let's uh, let's just sort of take a quick look around the board so you can see where the position of all the uh, components is, or are. And uh, let's make sure I'm in focus and yeah that's a component i put in that is the um connector for the speaker uh transistor and there are a bunch of leds here uh, all fairly fairly straightforward kit really no really horrible surprises uh, except for perhaps, well, it wasn't horrible, it was actually quite easy, but it's a bit bit odd, this power jack. But you can see the way that it's kind of, and I don't think I've got it perfect, to be brutally honest. I hope it fits in the case, otherwise I'm going to have to try and adjust it. But, yeah, it's, that's kind of how you're supposed to install it. Uh, and... Uh, Hopefully I've got everything in the right place and with the right polarity. Um, it's looking fairly straightforward at the moment. Now, uh, I'm going to need to sort out the speaker, um, but I'm kind of thinking that this board, uh, or the other thing that does need to be connected is the, uh, the switch strip, and that basically goes on like that you see the little tabs there and they go through those holes we can do this I'm looking through the camera to do this is never a good idea so there you go it sort of sits on there 
you need to make sure that's at 90 degrees go to the board uh, as much as you possibly can so pretty much like that and you'll see uh, that there are um, tabs here I haven't quite worked it out yet I might have this the wrong way around actually I've got this the wrong way around? no I have let me spin it around the other way um, the reason why I had to spin it around you see these pads here they need to match up with the pads on the main board and what you're going to do is, is basically do a bridging solder for those um, and that's why it needs to be at 90 degrees and you can see there you need to bridge so let me get this a bit closer yeah you need to bridge these pads across along here and also a bit of solder on these tabs which holds the button strip to the main board so it's, it's actually fairly straightforward, you know, there's, there's no weird and wacky science. I think the thing to do with it is to actually put a blob of solder on one of the two tabs and then just with your soldering iron on there, just somehow just double check that you've got the button strip at 90 degrees to the, to the main board, something like that. I'm not going to do that on camera because it's just too fiddly, um, but you get the idea. Um, and uh, But once I've done that, I'm thinking that we need to power it up. Now I have found a, a suitable power supply. Uh, I think it runs at 12, no, it runs at 9 volts. Uh, although this can run between 9 and 12 volts. Um, and uh, sit in operation there's no point in putting it in the case and putting it all together if, um, if it's not going to work um, so I'm uh, I'm going to put that power switch I'm going to put that uh, switch strip on and then just double check the uh, instructions but I think after that it's time to test it let's see how it goes Right, okay, so I've now installed the uh, button array at the top uh, and you can see soldered in at that pin and that pin and then on the back the uh, connections are bridged like that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So that's done. I've also fitted the speaker and plugged it in. So the next thing is to power it up. And yes, I have got nine volts being spat out of that. And all I need to do is shove it in there and we can either watch the whole thing light up in glorious success or explode. Um, now I know you're all secretly hoping for explosions and in a bit of a sick way so am I. So I'm, I, I vape. So that's calming my nerves. So um, let's I'll just plug it in and see what happens. So here we go. The moment of truth. Will it work? Well, I think the simple answer to that is no, it won't. So there's nothing happening there at all. Um, we need to possibly check the power supply. Um, so no power but no smoke either so I guess we can be thankful for that why have we not got any power all right well I need to investigate the power supply possibly um, 
it's not been used for a very long time and it could be dead so let me check that out you know sometimes I amaze myself as to how stupid I can be right let's try this again the power supply is plugged in electricery of 12 volts not 9 but 12 is going through this device and up here is a button and it's called an on off switch let's see what happens when we press it it lights up hallelujah right let me darken this so you can see it better and there we have it we have a perfectly working clock and very nice it looks too that green those great you can't tell on the let me do a focus see if that helps no that's not gonna help it, it the actual numbers look a bit white on the camera but it is a very very rich green very nice green indeed um, and uh, yeah that is that's cracking I'm pretty happy with that I'm very happy with that now if you remember on the back of the device and uh, look at that it's flashing all the way through the board let's just put a little bit of light on the subject um, there were these uh, pads that you could short out one there and one there if you short that one out it will display um, 12 hours if you don't uh, a 12 hour clock uh, and if you keep it um, not shorted if you like it will show 24 hours which is what I've done and likewise this is for temperature centigrade or Fahrenheit I prefer centigrade I know uh, if you're in America you guys prefer Fahrenheit and these two LEDs here kind of pointless actually in many respects you've got an LED here to indicate centigrade and an LED there to indicate Fahrenheit now if the only way you can select temperature is by shorting or unshorting those pads I suppose actually yeah I suppose they, they do have a point but um, any go any rate and of course the uh, AM uh, I think these two LEDs one shows AM and the other one PM I think that's PM and that's AM of course they're not going to work at all because I've used a 24 hour clock um, and uh, so these two LEDs are basically redundant um, so fantastic it's worked first time unfortunately I didn't work first time but it did so children remember the on off button there we go fabulous so I've got the backup battery in there I'm not going to change the time or set it all up yet because we've got to now put it in its case so I'm going to unplug the power like of that and we're going to start building the case um, so let me uh, get the bits and pieces together for the case and uh, we'll take a look at that right the first stage was to um, install this little blue piece of plastic and the way you do that I should have shown you really but there was there's supposed to be two plastic prongs and you just place it over the prongs you can see the holes there and then you get your soldering iron and you just pump just touch it down to melt melt the prong which will spread out and hold hold it in but the prong on this side is missing it's uh, broken off I guess um, but actually it's held in there quite firmly so I'm going to leave that be now the next thing to do is to create I think what will be the rear stand I'm not too sure but um, it's supposed to get that this piece and this piece and this piece are supposed to go together it looks like that that might be an adjustable yeah I think that adjusts in and out like that oh you're not in camera so it's these three pieces here okay so like that that one 
goes in there and then this plate pops on the top of it and we have to use three short screws self tappers um, what I could do with is a half decent screwdriver for this but I've only got one of these stupid ones um, to hand that is will that never go in let's just test this out that's I think supposed to be able to go in and out like that but I'm I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work, but if I put three screws in there, it's going to stop it from moving. That doesn't quite make sense. Oh, wait a minute, I think. <laughs> well, you see, I'm an idiot. There we go, it's supposed to go that way around. So, that's better. Ugh, it's getting late. Well, I'm getting tired. Um, I'm out of interest. I spent several nights on this kit because um, by the time I get home from work I had something to eat and chilled out. I only spend an hour or so making these kits. Um, after that I start to get a bit knackered and I just put them to one side and it's just no bad idea because when you start getting tired that's um, when you start making mistakes and uh, that ain't never a good thing. Um, so, so far so good with this kit, no explosions I'm afraid, sorry about that. I'm actually quite tempted to order another one of these if it, this one turns out nice, which at the moment it seems that it might do, um, perhaps get the red one. Blue LEDs on these clocks are nice, they're okay, but I just don't think the blue gives you enough visual definition. Um, so I think the green is the best, definitely. Red is pretty good, but blue, not so good. So there we go. And that springs in out. I presume that's going to be for the stand or something. I don't know. Uh, okay, so we now need to pass the bracket like that I'm looking at the instructions whilst I'm doing this um, so that I think needs to go like that that goes like that and then that goes excuse me probably need to I think yeah yeah so it clips on like that and I think the idea is, is that that stand probably, yeah, you can see there's like a, a series of notches there. So that was probably for adjusting the position of the, uh, of the stand. Um, just double checking I've got this right, yeah. So that, that looks right. So the next thing we do is we get the the case and that somehow goes in there like that and do we yeah okay so that'll go in there like that and the next thing we have to do is get this piece which will then I think sit on top of it Something like that. Yep. So I'll put it down flat, and we then need to get. And I think these are longer screws. Um, let's have a look. They look awfully long for something like this. There are several sizes of screw, so I just need to double check because I think these much longer ones. Uh, 
for uh, putting the main case together, but yeah, well, perhaps it is these. They these look a bit long. Oh, look at the backs. Well, actually, I don't know. They're probably not thinking about it. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place with this. I know. I just want to check how far those protrude and make sure they're not the wrong size. Well, I think they are the correct ones. Okay, so uh, all right. Let me. Um, you get the idea, anyway. Right? That screws down there like that. So I'm gonna do that, and I'll get back to you. Oh, well, that was a bit of a nightmare, but I've got, I've got it in in the end. But um, you can see the stand doesn't really clip back into place properly. It's just not quite right. You can see the screws were too long that they supplied, and I did double check to make sure I was using the right screws, and they're all the same length. It's the same with the small screws. You can see they protrude through the case. You know, it's often the way with these um, these kits that the electronics are great, but the cases aren't aren't so hot. But you know, it's okay. It's it, it stands like that. It um, can swivel to make it stand in portrait mode. Why you'd want to do that, I have no idea because it won't work. Uh, well, it will work, but it will just look stupid. Um, so anyway, so that's that done. The next thing to do is to install this array of buttons and uh, you might recall uh, earlier on um, I explained that one of these buttons had got broken off in transit that one there uh, which is a shame uh, supposed to go on there anyway so I'll have to worry about that in a minute but um, other than that what you're supposed to do is you've got these um, something to point with you'll probably see these little pegs and rather similar to the uh, little blue, um, I don't know what that's going to be for, it's just decoration I think. Um, it needs, they need to be um, held in there by um, just melting the, uh, that pin. With the soldering iron to hold them in. And uh, so that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, so, I'm not sure this is very good for your soldering arm to use it to melt plastic, but there you go. It does melt awfully easily, very easily, in fact. So that's that one. We'll move on to the next. Make sure it's 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 nice and it's nice and snug, and then. Uh, melt the peg a bit and for the final one a similar process and that'll do it and that's your buttons zoom out again and that's your buttons held in place except for that one and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one because I could glue it, but it needs to be slightly sprung. So I'm guessing what will happen when the case goes on, the actual um, buttons on the main circuit board will actually hold this in place. So I'm not succeeding here. I'm going to, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a piece of electrical tape um, cut it down to size a bit don't think I want that bit this one's a bit more substantial and uh, trying to hold it in Pressing it down with some force just to make sure the button gets held in. And there it is. It's not really obstructing the other ones. And uh, yeah, 
I think that might do it. So that's the buttons installed. Um, now the next thing to do is to disconnect the speaker from the board because we're going to install the speaker. And the speaker will go in that one there, like that. And now what they do is they supply these uh, sticky pads to hold it in with. And the idea is you put the sticky pads around the edge. Um, so uh, it seems a bit of a, an odd way of doing it, but I'm going to... I'm going to do what they say. There you go, so uh, it's supposed to be like that. So you just spread them evenly around the uh, the casing where the uh, speaker goes, and I'm assuming that will hold the speaker in. Okay. And the next thing it tells you to do is to cut off some unwanted plastic. And the unwanted plastic is uh, these prongs there. So what it's telling you to do... So I've lost it now, there it is. Let's see if I can get them more right on the subject. Yeah, there. So you're supposed to cut that off, so I will. He says trying to do it through the camera. Yeah, I didn't make a very good job of that. Where's my, uh, my scalpel? That's that, I think, and we're supposed to do it at uh, that location. There's one there as well. Let's get rid of that one. And the other one they tell you to get rid of is there. thing to do will be to fit the speaker. You're getting the idea of this. Um, so I'll just carry on filming it? Why not? You can always fast forward if you get bored. If you're not already bored of course. If you are, I'm sorry. I'll do my best. So I would take the other side of the protective pad off, or the stickers rather, and um, install the speaker. Something like that. Don't think I really did that one very well. On the other side. Oh well. Quick look, I think I might have crushed it into oblivion. To be brutally honest, there isn't really enough room for three pads. Let me um 
I'm going to get that third pad out if I can. Because frankly, it's not doing anything other than causing a problem. Let's stick that down like that. And that's staying in there pretty firmly, so let's not worry about that anymore. Um, next thing to do is that you've got um, some white uh, white spaces, these guys, and they will go in the following locations. You have a one there. Uh, there's five there, so there's going to be one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Um, and they are going to be for locating the circuit board. So, um, I think what? Yeah, so this, this is going to be easy. This is some. Um, Easier said than done, I would think, because these little white spaces, let's get that out of the way, these little white spaces only sit on top, they don't clip on, if they clipped on it would be a lot easier, but they don't. And what they tell you to do is to put each of those on and then put the board on top and screw it down. Well, the whole thing's just going to collapse, isn't it? Um, I think it would be easier to put the um, to put the screws in first. This is going to be awfully tricky. Like that. And then somehow... And it goes in five different locations. And then somehow offer this up. Yeah, that's going to be really fiddly. I'm going to do that off camera. Well, it's finished. There we go. The completed article. The construction of the case is fairly straightforward. There's three items. There's this black plastic surround. There is this clear ac acrylic uh, frame. And then, of course, the plastic cover, which was cracked, if you recall, which, is, which actually doesn't show that badly. Um, in fact, you'd have to look quite closely to see it. So that's, um, that's pretty good. That's uh, not turned out too badly at all. Um, so what does it do? Well, it's got an alarm on it. It's uh, showing the temperature. I don't know how accurate that is. It's probably not that far off, actually, uh, looking at it. Um, day of the week. The screen printing on the uh, on the the front uh, or the plastic, plastic uh, cover is... Uh, not great, but uh, you can see that the word day is uh, being eaten up partly by the plastic surround. Um, the letters for the day of the week are probably a little bit too large because they're covering up the LED. Not that really makes any difference. Um, and um, yeah, fair enough. It's got some odd features on it. Um, for example, it it, it's got bird sound. Uh, well, see what you think. I think those birds are ill. They shouldn't sound like that at all. <laughs> hysterical, really. Uh, I suppose it's supposed to be soothing. Personally, that would terrify me. Um, 
Yeah, so that and uh, th there's some alarm sounds. Don't know if I can get those going. Oh, that's enough of that. Right, so you get the idea. Um, as a clock, it's nice. The uh, uh, back stand swivels so you can uh, adjust it and put it to whatever angle you like, which is quite, uh, quite a nice feature. Uh, all in all, that is a pretty nice clock. Now, it cost about £18. Um, I don't know what that is in dollars, I don't know, $22, something like that, which for a Banggood kit is um, a bit expensive, but it's got quite a lot to it. Obviously, this case was designed for all sorts of different things, not just for this clock, um, because these uh, the printing for these buttons mean nothing at all to this particular clock. In fact, there's one button here, I think it's that one there, it does nothing at all, has no effect whatsoever. Um, and if you look at the side, you've got um, a mini USB, uh, you've got uh, USB SD card slot uh, headphones. I think that this case uh, was possibly used for um, a TV, a flat screen uh, or a little LCD TV, um, that's my guess, or it could have been, uh, the other thing I'm thinking of is one of those digital uh, frames, digital pictures, uh, what do you call them, um, uh, digital, digital photo frame, um, uh, which I, I think it might have well been used for, that, that blue clear button there, well A it's not a button, God knows what it does, for something else, it was. It certainly doesn't do anything on this. Um, yeah. Any anyway, rate, so there we go. That's the completed kit. It works really nicely. I've got it on a nine volt supply now, and it works just as uh, just as ni uh, as nicely. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that overall. So there we have it. That's another Banggood uh, kit completed. Another clock. I do like the clocks. I have to admit. Um, almost tempted to get another one of these with the red LED, but. Um, now I think we'll we'll find something new and different um, as they come out. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that uh, particular build. Um, banged on a bit. I always do when I when I do them. And uh, we'll move on to uh, something new. We've got uh, all sorts of exciting things here uh, that have turned up in the post. So uh, we'll get on to these at, uh, in the not too distant future. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you again soon. Cheers.